So. Hey, I'm Grayson Caps, and um, I think you're about to watch a movie called A Love Song for Bobby Long, which is about a real character out of Bruton, Alabama. He was a friend of my dad's. And uh, like they say, the 60s hit Alabama in the 70s. So I got to witness a lot of uh, debauchery with Bobby Long, Fred Stokes, my dad, and Tommy Jennings. They called themselves the uh, Belleville Avenue Quartet. And uh, so on weekends, there would be readings uh, of, uh, of, of Flannery O'Connor, Eudora Welty, and then uh, Bobby would stand up and recite uh, Shakespeare and Southern accent, like to be or not to be, that's the goddamn question, you know, stuff like that. And that's how I grew up. And my father, as he got uh, older, was kind of chronicling stories of Bobby and Fred. And I ended up moving uh, to New Orleans when I was 18, graduated Tulane. My dad and Bobby would come see me perform uh, plays at Tulane. And uh, it, uh, it felt uh, very uh, uh, inspired and, and, and free um, to, to have them come and be part of it. And um, after I graduated, I moved to a place called South Front Street in uh, New Orleans. And my father got inspired with all the stories to kind of place those stories in one location, which was South Front Street, where they had outdoor living room. And um, so he wrote a, a book called uh, Off Magazine Street. And um, as I started playing music in my early 20s, I ended up meeting a woman named Shani Gable who wanted us to do, me and my friend John Lawrence were in a band called Stave and Chain. She saw us at the Maple Leaf one night. Um, and her friend Kristen and her were doing a documentary called Anthem where they're asking the question, upon the turn of the millennium, what is the American dream? And so, so that's also a great documentary if, if you uh, could look it up. But after the uh, documentary was done, uh, Shaney wanted to do a movie in New Orleans, but she didn't have a story. So I had in the bottom cabinet of my filing uh, cabinet, uh, bottom drawer of my filing cabinet, a uh, hand-typed manuscript of my dad's story. It never got published. But I pulled it out, gave it to her, and uh, she read it, fell in love with it. And at the time, her job of making money was turning novels into screenplays. So she adapted it to a screenplay. And um, about four years go by where every summer she wants me, she says she wants me to be part of the movie because I have songs like Washboard Lisa and I wrote a love song for Bobby Long for Bobby because he loved T.S. Eliot and uh, the uh, love song of J. Alfred Prufrock. And so, and also he had always wanted me to play uh, a song called Stony by Jerry Jeff Walker. He said, that's my song. And as I got older, I thought, well, Bobby needs his own song. So that's a whole different story where I went and uh, presented it to him at a hotel in Bruton, Alabama, and uh, I gave him a cassette and I played it to him. He said, son, you have immortalized me in a song, and I thank you for that. So, very strangely, about four years later, well, he died He died a year after that. Um, I've, I've told this, he would, uh, he would actually call people within that year. And uh, when and I know this for a fact because my grandmother got several calls, uh, he would call, she would say hello, and then he would press play on the tape, tape recorder. So a lot of people, that's how his last year was being proud of that song. And uh, so anyway, four years go by, uh, Shaney keeps saying she's going to film, but she doesn't have the lead character. Um, so I start to kind of give up on it. and. Uh, after the fourth year uh, early, she says, we're going to film this summer. And by this time, I'm thinking, OK, whatever. And I said, well, by the way, who's playing Bobby Long? She said, well, John Travolta. And I was like, good God, OK, this is real. And uh, at, also, uh, at the time, I did not know who Scarlett Johansson was. Um, so she said, Scarlett Johansson is playing uh, uh, Percy, Percy Lane. And, um, so it was it was very surreal to see this happen 
and uh, I'm losing track of things. I hope you guys enjoyed the film. Um, and one thing I will say is, it's, you know, lucky that Bobby was not alive at the time because he would have insisted that he played himself <laughs> in the movie. But um, it's, uh, I spent a lot of time with John Travolta teaching him these songs I grew up with, with the Belleville Avenue Quartet. And um, I spent a lot of time helping him with the dialect. Uh, my father actually uh, spoke every word of John Travolta's uh, uh, dialogue in a tape recorder so John could replicate his accent. It was not a typical Southern accent because he had a college education, so it was a little, little more refined. Um, and um, how is it for you, like being part of that with your dad? I mean, you're writing songs for something that the film it, is inspired by him. That's a pretty cool. Yeah, well, it, it was a, it was a combination because I was writing songs separate from my dad about the same people and and he was uh writing about his friends and so our our art uh commingled like that and it was it was really uh, you know beautiful um and uh anyway i could go on and on about it but i hope you guys enjoy the film and uh bye <laughs>